David Eubel of Harvard won a Nobel Prize with his colleague Torsten Wiesel for mapping the action of receptor cells along the visual path of a primate, from the retina to the cortex. Receptor cells usually in, a vi in the visual pathway mean the cells that take in the energy it into electrical signals. And in the retina, those are the rods and cones. There are 125 million rods and cones in each retina. So in the case of the visual pathway, you start with the retina. The output is the optic nerve, which contains a million fibers. They end up in a certain region in the brain. That region, or there are really two or three regions that they end up in. Each of those sends a cable of fibers of the order of maybe a million to other regions, and they connect to other regions. And in the case of the cortex, you have separate areas of cortex, each one connected to one or more other areas. And this whole thing is a pathway. In the cortex, for example, the primary visual cortex, which is about seven stages beyond the receptors in the retina, those cells uh, react to visual stimuli only if the if a line falls on the retina and the line has to be a particular orientation. It can be a bright line or a dark line or an edge between bright and light. Any kind of line really generally works, but the position of the line and the orientation are terribly important. And if they're not just right, any individual cell doesn't, doesn't respond. In this experimental footage, a bright vertical line stimulates a small number of neurons in the visual cortex of a cat. The crackling sound is the electrical activity of these neurons as they respond to this retinal image. By listening to the intensity of this electrical activity, the researchers can determine the correct orientation of the line. But when the line is moved to a diagonal or horizontal position, the amount of stimulation decreases dramatically. we're only at a very elementary stage when it comes to understanding something like how you recognize a face or something like that. The, the general region of the brain is known where, where things like that go on, but we don't have the slightest idea of what's happening at the level of single cells for that particular problem. But for more elementary problems, for the, the very first uh, processes of vision, we do have a very good understanding of what happens at the very beginning. So it's just a start. Misha Pavel of Stanford University is studying the successive stages of information processing that take place continually as we perceive the world. Using computer graphics, he has demonstrated how the visual system breaks down visual stimulation into millions of bits of information and recombines them into a coherent image that we recognize. Seeing something is seen such an effortless activity that it's hard to imagine for us the complexities and difficulties that are involved. Only when you try to build a robot that can actually see and recognize objects do you realize how complicated a task this is. People can, must do awful lot of processing in order to see images and interpret them. Here is an image of a cat as our eye and brain sees it. Now let's look at what the visual system goes through to enable us to see this image. When the light first reaches the retina, the image is slightly defocused by the optics of the eye. Then it is broken up into millions of little pieces. Each receptor sees just a minuscule portion of the original image and measures its brightness. Different receptors in the retina are sensitive to different colors of light and respond to the amount of that color that they see. To discover objects, the visual system tries to find important boundaries. It uses edge and line detecting neurons whose characteristics have been investigated by Hubel and Wiesel. Here you can see the results of the red, green and blue edge detectors. Look at the blue edges. It is hard to believe that there is a cat in there. What I'd like to show you now is the kind of information that the brain uses in order to make sense out of these messy images. The things that the brain seems to look for are constancies and simplicity. Imagine that you are in your visual system looking at this pattern of active neurons. But you can't recognize the pattern. We can see it now 
because all the points in the cat picture move together. This is an example of the brain using rigidity to recognize moving objects. Ambiguous perception of motion can actually destroy the rigidity percept. In this case, we have a rotating rigid object, a square, but when its corners disappear from view, the square appears to get smaller. When the corners reappear, it gets larger. Another example. We thought that the square loses its rigidity because the visual neurons at each location can see only a small proportion of the entire picture and therefore can't accurately perceive the direction of the moving parts of the object. If we rotate the cross, then the stationary square appears to be rigid. We can simultaneously compare these two situations. The conclusion is that the motion of the square is necessary to lose rigidity. The failure of rigidity in this case helps scientists to study how information from different retinal locations is combined to form a single percept. This is one of many examples where perceptual phenomena can reveal how our brain works.